Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we are discussing um, how we can bridge the inequality gap in Nigeria. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 So before we went on a break, Jennifer had asked Tijani a question. Um, Tijani, do you mind coming in? something at this point. I, I, I think we might get to a point where we would need the individuals to step up. So for example, I was just thinking about it. Do you know it's more expensive to take a COVID test than to get the COVID vaccine? So would you prefer to keep taking tests when you have to show it somewhere or when you have to travel away than just taking the vaccine and not having to every now and then testing, testing, testing. So I feel like that's um, something that individuals will start doing. And of course, it will probably broaden the inequality, but on a local scale. And what must we do from now? I think that, you know, um, they say that the responsibility of government is to protect the lives and properties of citizens. And one of the things that COVID-19 threatens is our lives. So this is another opportunity for government to prove its presence within the state by providing what is needed for the vaccine. So, of course, we are getting um, 60 million doses for almost free. And then we are also buying more doses um, with state funds and all that. But looking at it, it is not likely that we are going to, no matter what I don't think there's any way around it for now. We cannot get the whole of at least we can't get 50% of the country vaccinated before the end of this year. So we are looking at say the end of 2022 to get the amount of people that we would need to say we have head immunity within Nigeria. So I think that if government continues to support the system as much as it can. I think a lot of uh, monies at this point in time should go to making sure that we have the kind of facilities that make people survive this disease. So of course, we know that as, as it was reported in Lagos that a lot of people come from other states and even some neighboring countries to come to the Yaba IDH for treatment because that is one center that has proven to have a high um, survival rate. So I think that what we should also focus on as we are focusing on the vaccine is how to duplicate that kind of system across the country. Hmm. You know this Tijani, this um, I'm just thinking in my head how do we bridge this gap of inequality? Why I say so is I mean the first person we saw on social media was uh, former pre uh, Vice President Atiku that went to UAE to take the jab then a governor from, uh, I can't remember the governor now in the East, the wife taking the jab and telling us in the video that the husband is in line, that he's not, he's not his turn yet. In fact, they are still looking for, they've not found a slot for him. So already, this thing is already happening like, okay, it is, now who get money pass, right? That will eventually, um, if you were to give an advice, right, to young people that are watching and everybody that is watching rather, you know, about COVID-19, what would you rather say to them? Because we know, given the kind of structure that we have in this country, when it comes to everything, people will always show that I have more money. I can, you know, I can bypass certain kind of protocols, right? Ideally, technically, when these vaccines come into the country, the first receivers are supposed to be the healthcare workers, the people that are the frontline workers. Those are the people that are supposed to even receive those um, jabs first. Then the aged people, because those are the people that are at the uh, borderline, uh, vulnerable people, the most vulnerable people, right? But this, the way you've said it now, that is the list of senators and all of those things, I'm just wondering, so how do we even go about it? If we were to advise ourselves, because we know that if it comes to things like this, there will always be that show of inequality. How do we advise ourselves? Okay, so um, first, I would like to go in defense of government. Now, in... Africa generally, and of course, specifically in Nigeria, we have a very strong resistance to vaccines, especially when we know that the big farmers producing these uh, vaccines are, some of them, for example, Pfizer has a history in Nigeria 
where they came in 1995-1996, test a particular vaccine and left hundreds of children um, injured, paralyzed, and all that. So there is that um, reality in our consciousness that we are not we are not willing to take the vaccine immediately they come. Mm-hmm. In fact, um, someone was saying to me that we have to watch people are taking it and make sure that they celebrate their next birthday before we take the vaccine, you know? So there's that. So because of that, government is saying, okay, we the leaders, we are going to go first, the president. For example, if President Wright takes that vaccine, we are going to have millions of people in the north who are going to say, oh, Baba is taking it, so I'm also going to take the vaccine. Mm. But if he does not, they say, yeah, no, we've not seen him take it, so we are not going to take it. So I feel like as, as, as for young people, we should try as much as possible to educate people around us about the vaccines and why it's important for people with vulnerabilities to take it first. And we should also, as a country, see ways in which, for me, of course, I'm, I'm thinking that we, the lessons we should take from this particular instance would be what we are going to do if we are faced with this kind of situation in any time in the future. Mm. We should see how we can make government support science more. For example, a lot of people have been shouting locally that they want to uh, produce local vaccines, they want to do this and all that. You know, there's just the general Nigerian mentality that it's impossible for us to make local vaccines. So let's just wait for what is coming. But as young people, we are the ones who are capable of changing that narrative. Absolutely. Let me come to Jennifer, then I'll come to AK. Is Jennifer there? Or she's disappeared again? <laughs> AK, come in, please. Okay, so I, I was going to talk about um, you trusting that we can actually either reproduce the vaccine or or develop our own vaccine. But Tijan, I want to ask you, do you really believe that? Do we have the infrastructures? Because I think that the reason why people are doubting is that half the people that have come out to say they can do this, have they followed the steps? Because this is science. There's, there's, there's how it is done. And I don't think I have seen um, any call in maybe the national newspaper for any pharmaceutical saying we need support in terms of doing ABC and having clear plans to say government back us because we're very sure about this. So I'm saying well, in essence, what I'm trying to say is that it, we have a right to doubt it. Okay, we have a right to doubt it because things have not, I know that when this began, we were recall that we talked about it, there was a reward of 100 million for whoever, 100 million naira for whoever would deliver them, would, would produce the vaccine. So what happened? What happened to our pharmaceutical company? What happened to the young people that you're talking about? Do you really be, believe that we have the infrastructures, we have the capacity? Let's not even say produce, I will even reproduce the one that has been produced. <laughs> I think today we may not have the capacity to produce a vaccine. So for example, um, while speaking with Bill Gates, that was one of the questions that we asked. And what he said was that if we produced, for example, if we produce a vaccine in Nigeria today, and let's say we have enough, if we sell to, say, South Africa or Kenya or whatever country, do they have enough trust in us to say, oh, this has gone through processes and we're going to buy it and we're going to use it? They don't. And that's the truth. So it takes time to build that kind of trust. It takes time to build that kind of reputation. But what my argument is, is that this is the time to actually start building that kind of reputation such that uh, when we say, for example, of course, like you said, if we say we built a vaccine today, people would laugh. Oh, Nigeria, you know the way we we're dealing with Madagascar when they said they had a cure, you know? But if we begin to build that reputation from now, in the next five, 10, 20 years, if we said we had the cure to something, it would be easy for people to trust our processes too. And, you know, um, one of the things that they say about science is that no knowledge, no every failure in science is knowledge. So if you do something, if we try to produce a vaccine today and we waste our 10 billion naira on trying to do that and it fails, the knowledge we have gathered from that process will be useful for the next sense. And that's how I think we can approach it. 
Okay, okay is Jennifer Jennifer there now? Yes, I am. Oh, okay, go ahead. You actually just said you you just said um you just spoke my mind about the about producing our own vaccine. Now, aside um people from other countries trusting us, the question we need to ask first of all, do Nigerians trust Nigerians? Mm -hmm. Because um, a lot of people don't even believe in the healthcare system. Now, the only reason why people still go to our hospitals here is because they don't have the money to travel out. Trust me, if people had the money to travel out as much as they want, a lot of people would not even go to our hospitals here because they don't even have that trust. Now, even a pharmaceutical company comes out and says, oh, we want to work on getting a vaccine. First of all, before you even start selling the vaccine, you need people that you will test it on. How many people would volunteer to be tested on? Personally, I wouldn't, <laughs> to be honest. And if that's us being very, very honest. So I feel I feel like there, there are lots of things we need to start working on to build that trust in Nigerians first. Before we start thinking of people outside. If we don't trust ourselves, nobody else will trust us. I think us. it goes with that premium of placing a premium on every human, every new human life in Nigeria. So let me take a comment from Benson. It says, in Nigeria, the immunity inequality is equalized by our herbs intake. <laughs> <laughs> all the all the that we are taking is our is enough immunity <laughs> equality equalizer all right so he says what is the update on the vaccine procured by boa group has the political tussle been resolved it's not boa group that purchased it to boa group are claiming they purchased it but kakovid is coming to say that they actually is a collective effort that they have paid uh, paid for it and it will come in batches benson so there's a comment from chiso uh, let me. Uh, I think I'll give um, AK Chisom's comment to take. Um, but AK, <laughs> oh no, sorry, Tijani. While AK is trying to get the comment, uh, Tijani, this is our Agbo. Why are you people not promoting it now? You are busy calling Big Gate and doing interview. <laughs> there are people that are doing. I mean, let me tell you something. I, I want to believe that maybe I caught COVID. I don't know because I lost my test of sense and smell. It was my herbs, lemongrass, whatever. I never those things I used. But I'm just saying that why are we not promoting the local herbs and all of that that we have and we are blessed with in Africa? Because truly, truly, maybe that's just why our numbers are low. Tijani, are you there? Or did we lose oh. him? I, th I think we lost him. Okay, so AK, take your comments from Chiso. <laughs> okay. We believe now, Agbo. I, 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 <laughs> I like with Chiso. Let me take from Chiso. He says, hi, guys. So this inequality is not just about COVID-19 vaccines or vaccination as we operate a class-based system in Nigeria. But then, how come one year into the whole stuff, no singular hospital has been completed for research, etc., and now we have jumped into spreading over 400 billion negotiating for vaccines? Well, good luck. Thanks, Chisum. So, so I hear Chisum, um, and he's right about the different levels of inequality. And if you read um, Tijani's article, he talked about five layers of inequality. So COVID is just another one. Hmm. We know that by virtue of the fact that you're in a third world country, it's, it's another inequality, the color of your skin. We're not oblivious of that. Um, and I think he did mention that um, in, in his article. And it will take more than one year to just from coming from nothing to no, setting but, up something. But AK, but AK, well, in, over to you. AK, in all honesty, eh? you remember when this COVID thing started and Ghana built hospitals and we kept on saying that the money we were hearing that they were using to build one isolation center would have been enough you see this is not this is what gets me upset whenever i'm talking about things like this because i'm wondering like are the government the government uh, our government are they really really sitting down to think and count the cost because you would have used this opportunity it would have been a perfect opportunity to use one stone to kill many birds we know that our healthcare structures are really dilapidated, right? We know that we do not have enough healthcare facilities. So instead of investing money building isolation centers, why didn't they just take the same money? It would not, it would not have added, I mean, cost them extra to use those money but, to but, build but hospitals, build research centers. This is the thing. But this is what gets know, me upset. But, uwa, uwa, let me cut you in. You know that the isolation centers were an emergency and it will take longer to build a full-fledged hospital i don't think will, so um the way it came, i don't think so somewhere to quickly attend to i don't cases. think so china did it i don't think so i don't let me come to tijani's china now you don't have china money Ua. 
No, but we have those. No, you see, this is the thing. Nigeria, we have money. We have that money. We have the money, we AK have Nigeria. Money. We have money. Our journey is here. We have money. See, I hate I hate that I have to keep going back to the news I took um I, I took the other time about our 2021 budget for the year. Aka, we have money. The amount of money they are pushing into things that are not relevant. Thank is, you. Is, is actually, I don't know. It, it, it's appalling. You see, I think we, we should hear from money. Tijani. I think we should hear from Tijani because I think he's trying to get a word in. Please come in, Tijani. Uh, I think we have the money. We just, we just don't have the priorities set right. Thank you. But I would say that one of the things that we have achieved with COVID-19 is to build labs. Of course, every state in Nigeria now has a molecular laboratory, which was only available maybe in less than five, six states at the beginning of the pandemic. So I think that while we might not have seen a lot of movement within the healthcare sector, I think that aspect of testing and um, being able to detect when there's a problem or there's a new issue, virus, um, something, I think we have, we have made some progress in that state. Yes, I agree that we could have used this opportunity to kill two birds build more hospitals. It shouldn't take that long to build a, an hospital if we are committed to it. And we should have done a lot more with primary healthcare system in that space of time. Sorry, Uwa, can I just add something? Go I ahead. would support that instead of building new hospitals, we make the ones that are lying in very bad states, we make them work. Uh. Because, yes. Okay. No, seriously, what don't you think okay, about that? Imagine see, that the one uh, the state of some of our hospitals is better well, you just use the money and build new ones that to go and innovate. A milestone. <laughs> I can't even, I actually agree with you. I agree with you because even if we build more, if you build um, new hospitals, we still have the primary health care centers that are just lying there and then they are not being taken care of. You and the thing is, there are people the that picture. don't have the resources. There are people who don't you have the resources. You need to see the picture that was shared done. during... Yeah, you need to see the picture of some um, infectious um, infectious words that were circulating. And you'll be... You will wonder if it's somebody's kitchen in a very rural area. Hmm. Or it was an it was a hostel of some rural school. Hmm. That was how bad... Or that is how bad the state of those places were. So why are you building new ones when the old ones are dilapidated? Absolutely. Okay, so Tijani, because we have one minute left, let me give you the final word. So <laughs> <laughs> let me quickly take a comment from. Okay, this person did not put their okay. name, but it says, I'm watching your program from here. I think the that lady presenter just insulted Peter Joche. Yes, she she has um, the right to be angry, but insulting I, I don't think I did insult him. Insulting Peter Joche at the same time saying that she doesn't want to sound insultive is the height of it. I mean, who does she think she is or how annoyed is she? Blah, blah, blah. What is, her what is his name again, for God's sake? Well, honestly speaking, the truth is, um, if we want to build Nigeria, let's be seen to be serious, right? It is not about being a veteran or whatever that will qualify you to, to uh, what's it called, to become president of this country. No. We have to be seen to be serious. And this is the same card we keep playing all the time. That's why politicians do not take us seriously. So I, I am, if, if, you, if it felt uh, insultive, I'm sorry, but I don't think I insulted the man. But Tijani, quickly, one last word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I think that, um, you know, like you get said, we are already in this problem where it's clear that there's an inequality. If, we, if the U.S. continues at this rate, by maybe next month, they would have probably vaccinated everybody in the country. And of course... In Africa or in Nigeria, for example, by that time, maybe not a single soul would have gotten the vaccine in the country. So we have to start thinking about how to solve these kind of problems long term. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I don't think we're ready for that yet because we'll use the money to do <laughs> other things. But I think for me, the government should prioritize. Honestly speaking, if we take care of our health, I mean, when we talked about the primary health care with, um, I can't remember now her name, Dr. Kemi, I think. When we talked about that primary health care, it is so clear where the problem lies in this country so instead of carrying money that we do not have to go and spend for something that we really do not need it's not a priority right now why don't we focus on our primary health care um section and build those ones that's my that's my final take thank you ladies <laughs> they said i should run away <laughs> <laughs> thank you ak thank you to, um jennifer thank you so much to jenny
Thank you. All right, you. so Waze was birthed from Thank the need you. to inform, inspire, influence lives towards action. And this year, we're starting our CSR focus on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. If you are a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you are a job seeker, keep watching Waze and follow us on all our social media handles, as this will be an all-year-round engagement. So tell your friends to keep their eyes on Waze. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Of all the forms of inequality, injustice is in healthcare, rather, is the most shocking and inhumane. That's from Dr. Martin Luther King. All right, we'll see you live on Monday as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.